Scorpio, thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel. My name is Varush and this is the Scorpio reading for the Lion's Gate. I'm super excited to be with you guys and I love this reading. I've been really enjoying the other ones I've done and I hope you enjoy this one as well. I am offering one-to-one -one readings for Lion's Gate. I had a fun time doing your Eclipse readings in July, so I want to do the same type of idea um, Lionsgate focus readings. No promise I can bring in big energy, but I hope that I'll provide you with some insights and help in your journey. Um, this is probably best for people seeking spiritual kind of conversation, okay? So let's show you guys what the Lionsgate is. Lionsgate is actually not an astrological um, event. It's an event that has to do with perception. It's sort of astrological. Sirius rises up over the pyramids and um, so you can see it in the sky. Sirius is the dog star. It's the brightest star in the sky from our perception and every year at this time it rises over the pyramids and that's a very ancient thing that's happened. And so Lionsgate is the portal of awareness, ascension, insight into high vibrational states, very, very exciting time. However, this year it is a little bit more astrological because the North Node is in conjunction, this is the part I'm excited about, in conjunction with Sirius and its neighboring star Canopus. Canopus will be the alignment, the closest alignment with the North Node on Lion's Gate and I almost said Heaven's Gate. <laughs> <laughs> better than Hell's Gate. There's a place in BC called the Hell's Gate. So anyway, um, there, <laughs> the North Node is in alignment with Lion's Gate and, um, uh, and Canopus on uh, August 8th. Okay, so that is the Canopus has to do with leading and direction and then the North Node will retrograde back to 14 degrees and create a conjunction with Sirius on the following few days. So you're getting a really potent transit here in your ninth house of expansion of awareness, expansion of learning the world. It's a beautiful placement. It has to do with intelligence, reason, learning. It's time to be a sponge, Scorpio. Absorb the lessons and absorb what the world is teaching you. It's the receptive the receptivity of this transit is very potent and powerful. So the sun is in Leo, but remember when we're saying like Ly Lionsgate refers to the pyramids, right? To to the Sphinx, I presume, but it's the sun is in Leo, but Sirius is actually in Cancer. That's the distinction. Sometimes it gets confusing, but that's okay. It's not that hard. 14 and a half degrees of Cancer right now. The stars, the fixed stars do move, but they move like very, very slowly depending on how far they are from us or like what the, what the space functions are. I guess there's velocity too is affects it, but really distance. It's a measure of distance. Okay. So let's see your uh, messages. Uh, so your first message is the Seven of Pentacles. Sorry, I've done a lot of these and I'm still in the middle of meditation on them. Seven of Pentacles, saving, a lot of people are getting this. A lot of effort is being put in towards greater outcomes. There's a promise that you're trying to achieve that seems far away that you're reaching out to. Then we have the Queen of Rods, a Sag, a Leo, or an Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising, secondary transits in water. Somebody has given you advice about the path that you're on, Scorpio. Somebody has given you advice, and now you are absorbing the advice and trying to figure out whether or not this is in alignment with what you want for yourself, what you're working towards. The next message is the Six of Cups. This is Sun in Scorpio. Really, really heart-based connection. I feel like you love someone from the past. I feel like you love someone a lot or there's a very kind of um, nostalgic sort of um, connection in which you're thinking about something or thinking about a relationship or someone who gave you advice. There's a, there's a, there's what you're supposed to be zeroing in on with Lionsgate is your mind. 
and specifically your thoughts and how your thoughts are faced and what can be learned from your experiences or the things around you, what the universe is teaching you now and what is the level of awareness that you can reach by ascending through this process. How can you ascend through this process? The next message is the Eight of Pentacles. Sun in Virgo, working really, really hard towards an outcome. Sun in Virgo on August 23rd. And so that will, in some way, more work, more applied effort, really trying to hone in on something. That's great because on August 11th, Jupiter will go direct in your second house of money and bring you a lot of mobility. So if you've been doing a lot of working and really applying yourself towards gaining whatever financial goals you have been working towards, then the payout comes when Jupiter goes direct on the 11th. So it's all about openness and awareness, Scorpio. The more open and aware you are, the greater the lessons. The next message is the Ace of Swords. Communication coming through or wanting to communicate. Communication with the Queen of Swords. I feel as though it's sort of unwelcome. I feel as though communication comes in and it's sort of like you want to take a step away from it. It feels as though that relationship is greatly appreciated, but current contact is not necessarily sought after or welcome. The next message is the Queen of Swords, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra. There's definitely, there's definitely seeking out some kind of a there's a lot of agreement through conversation. There's an, a lot of agreement and and common ground through agreeing in conversation between people, people sort of brainstorming together, trying to figure things out, talking and trying to figure out what to do with their individual experiences and how to use them in the way moving forward. So there's a lot of that. But I wonder if that's not almost limiting you in terms of your in terms of the the conclusions that you are attaining because in some way the conversations steer around the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Wands and not necessarily a broader se selection of ideas. So just by virtue of who's having the conversation, the amount of options is limited because of their beliefs. And I think that it's maybe, it's saying that the conversation that you're having about what you've put into circumstances or the future you need to back out and still consider where you're going to invest your money where you're going to invest your time here is the next message we have the fool a new beginning a new beginning in a new direction i feel like you'll have another option i would say wait for the option of which way to go i think you're about to have some kind of consciousness raising awareness that will shift you from the things that you're working through now the different options there's another option that's coming your way and that's going to be the right use of your finances the right use of your time and then we have the three of cups there's people who are very social who are pushing for a reunion there's people who are very like they blow their time so they're there's really pushing for a reunion um, really engaging and trying to suggest to spend some time together, maybe take a trip together, that kind of thing. You have to decide what's best for you. It's a North Node question. So that has to do with Dharma, whether or not you want to take this trip. The next message is the World card. Yeah, it's definitely around an, a proposition to do with a trip or some kind of a a voyage. Five of Pentacles on the bottom is still worried about finances. This is a tricky one because I feel like you're supposed to really decide what's best for you based on your finances. So you're kind of weighing out the potential of a life opening, eye opening experience in the world with people expanding your horizons. But money has been an issue. And so money once again makes you wonder whether or not you should pursue this as an opportunity or something that you want. So I think that there's a real kind of enticing idea. Hey, let's go do this. Let's go there. But that's a lot of money. And I feel like you feel the fact that it's a lot of money and you feel as though it's not that you don't have money. It's that you don't have money for this, right? You don't feel like 
putting money into something at this time of this type is right for you. And I think you're right. I think that there's something else coming up for you around the corner that will be much more, have a much higher return for you and your, and your, what you have worked out for yourself. So, you know, take your time. I do feel like for some of you, you're being really forced to go somewhere. You're being really like strong armed to go in a certain direction and you may have to travel at the bidding of someone someone asks you to go and you have to go out of a commitment probably family commitment responsibility siblings anything like that so there's so there's some kind of pressure that's putting on that is being put on you that may go beyond your decision to go or not. There's a, there's a higher principle involved, but you're still getting a brand new beginning towards the things that you've worked towards, and those are not going to become any way discarded or used up or thrown away. Okay? I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. I had a lot of fun making it for you guys. If you want a one-on-one, -on -one, then go in the description. I'm doing those Lionsgate readings. If not, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.